Welcome home, everybody. I'm so glad we could get together this weekend. We could gather together. I'm thankful. You know, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for our team. I'm thankful for our church. I'm thankful for the technology, the resources that God has given to us so we can connect during COVID. You know, we this weekend is going to be just a little different. You talk about being authentic. Here we are authentic in my hotel room. Pastor Kim's sitting over there praying for me as we're doing this. And, you know, we're on vacation. During COVID, we haven't been anywhere. We haven't gone anywhere. And, you know, we felt it was time to get away for a few days, to refresh, to get renewed and come back better. But I wanted to be with you this weekend. I love you as your pastor. I care about you. And I just wanted to connect with you this weekend. I'm thankful that we could gather together. I want you to know that I'm praying for you every day, that we're believing God, that the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. And just a reminder, you know, the first weekend of October, we're all gathering together again back over on the South Campus, and uh, we're going to open up the nursery, we're going to open up the children's ministry. So keep that in prayer. Everything's still by the guidelines of St. Charles County. Uh, your safety is our priority, but it's awesome to see things moving forward, and we're thankful and we're grateful. I do believe I have a word from God for you this weekend, and and just, uh, you know, bear with me. And just believe God with me right now because, you know, when you minister and when we come to church, it's two parts, isn't it? I have my part and you have your part. And we do both of it together and we have a dynamic service. We leave better and stronger and closer to God, equipped for the times that we're living in. I have a word I believe from God for you this weekend. I want to share with you, what do I do with my anger? What do I do with my anger? You know, right now during covid you and I are experiencing there's more tension than ever before. There's more stress. There's more contention than ever before. People are, are frightened. They're fearful. And just take it. If you're a note taker, you might write this down, that, that really anger, they tell us, starts with fear. Did you know that? Anger starts with fear. Anger really starts with fear, and then it goes to frustration. Think about the people that maybe you work with or live with, or next to, or go to school with, or acquainted with, right now that you're sensing they're angry, they're fed up, they're ticked off, they're, they're unhappy, they're miserable. F anger starts with fear, it moves to frustration, and then it ends up with depression. Those are all components, or all part of the family of anger. We all experience it. You know, there's a good anger and there's an evil anger. Did you know that? There, there's a godly anger, a godly indignation, a righteous indignation where we stand up for who we are in Christ. There, there's, a good, there's a good anger, but also there's an evil, destructive anger. And that's what I want to talk about this weekend. What do I do with this anger that I'm feeling? How do I deal with it? How do I get through it? How do I get over it? And so I want to give you seven ways to do that, but I want to share some scriptures with you. First of all, and Proverbs 29, and I have my, so bear in mind, our lighting is not real good, but we're doing the best we have with what we have. But Proverbs, the guys are going to have it on the screen, Proverbs 29 and 22, it's in the Living Bible on the screen there, but I want to read it to you from the Amplified as well. Proverbs 29, 22, and here's what it says. This is so powerful. Uh, it says that a short-sighted fool always loses their temper. Oh my goodness. You know, somebody said when we lose our temper, we lose our reputation. When we lose our temper, we could lose our family. When we lose our temper, we could lose our husband, or our wife, or our children. When we lose our temper, we could lose our health. It's self-destructive. When we lose our temper, somebody says you could lose your job, that next promotion. Wow. A short-sighted fool always loses their temper and displays their anger. But this is you and me. A wise man uses self-control and holds it back. A wise person uses self-control. Did you know that self-control is one of the fruit of the Spirit? It's one of the fruit of the Spirit. Self-control. A wise person uses self-control and they hold it back. That's huge, isn't it? That's so important. So number one of the seven points, and the guys are going to have the screen, what do I do with this anger? Again, there's more tension. There's more contention. 
There was more people angry about the world being, you know, interrupted. We've lost our freedoms. Things aren't the same. We feel constrained. We feel restrained. We feel limited. We're all going through the same thing. So what do we do with it? What do I do with this anger? And for those of you that you're watch parties right now, those of you you're the small groups, others, you might want to call a friend or, or, or refer a friend to this. This is so important. So number one, take responsibility and admit my anger. Take responsibility and admit my anger. And again, you're going to hear things here. We're in the hotel room. This is real authentic. This is the real deal. Uh, but I wanted to be with you. I hope it's okay. I do believe I have a word today that's going to help you and other people what you're going through because we have to admit our anger. I've been angry. I've been upset. I don't like some of the, my freedoms has been taken away. I think if we're honest, we all have felt or are feeling or are dealing with the emotion of anger. So number one, we need to admit our anger and take responsibility for it. That's huge. That's huge. Number two, number two, we have to recognize the source of our anger. The guys have got it on the screen. So number one, we have to take responsibility. And number two, we have to recognize the source of our anger. What's causing this anger? We need to know the source. If I don't know what the problem is, how can I fix it? If I don't admit it and then recognize the source of it, that's part of recovery. And by the way, we have a ministry right here at Church on the Rock. Every Thursday night, small groups uh, celebrate recovery. You know, you can be addicted to the emotion of anger. There are some people who just live angry all the time. Angry about an ex. Angry about the last job. Angry about what the, the last church did to them. Angry about what the government or their neighbor or their in-laws or outlaws or whatever. Or the person at Walmart, how they were treated. You know, some people are addicted to anger and they feed off that and they stir up strife. So what do I do with this anger? Number one, we said we take responsibility and we admit our anger. Number two, we recognize the source of our anger. That's huge. The next scripture I want to give you, and again, the light is not real good, so bear with me, but the guys will have it on the screen, is Proverbs 15 and verse 18. Proverbs 15 and verse 18. And I want to read that to you. Proverbs 15 and verse 18. This is really, 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 really good. Proverbs 15, verse 18. This is Pastor Kim's Bible, so I have to try to find it. I find it real, uh, it's real easy to find. Okay, look what it says. It's the amplified version. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife. Oh my goodness. You know, that's one of, we need to recognize, you know, the evils of anger, the wrong anger, because it stirs up strife. And the Bible says that strife opens the door to the enemy. Oh my goodness. What do I do with this anger? I need to admit it. I need to acknowledge the source of it, right? Take responsibility. A hot-tempered person stirs up strife, but he or she who is slow to anger and patient calms disputes. So right now, what do we do with our anger? Uh, and how do we help other people who are dealing with anger? We've got to be a peacemaker. We've got to walk into the room and bring calmness and quietness. We've got to carry with us the peace of the Lord. Right now is a great opportunity to win souls. Right now is a great opportunity to reach people. Right now is a great opportunity to help people who are dealing with anger. And that's not to add to it, but that is to walk into the room or walk into the situation and bring calmness, bring the peace of God. Wow, that's so, so important. So seven things, what we can do to help ourselves and help other people with anger that we're all dealing with. Number one, take responsibility and admit my anger. Number two, recognize the source of my anger. And number three, release my anger to God. He's the only one that can really truly help us. Release my anger to God. I, I, if I, if I uh, you know, repress it, I'm going to express it in the wrong way. If I repress my anger, hold it in, then I'm going to express it in the wrong way. I'm not going to have self-control, and I'm going to lose things that I may not want to lose when I lose my temper. 
So, Pastor, I've got a temper problem. You know, my my aunt, my mom, my dad, my grandfather, my, it's part of our family. We are in a new family now. And you know what? We, we release our anger to God because he knows what we're dealing with and he knows what's hurting us. People who are angry are hurt. And we've heard it, right? Hurt people hurt people. So I release my anger to God. I have to surrender it to God. I have to say, God, I can't, but you can. God, I need your help. You know, what my wife did, my husband did, my mom, my dad, my peers, my friends, my siblings, well, they really hurt me. They really offended me. That made me mad. That made me angry. We all deal with those emotions. But what we need to do is surrender it, release it to God. So number four, I have to respond to anger biblically. I have to respond. See, all my R's, I really worked hard last night in the hotel room. I hope you appreciate it. But I have to respond. I know you do. I have to respond. You know, we found out during COVID, it's not what happens to us. It's how we respond to it. I have to respond to this anger biblically. Not like the world does. Get high, get drunk, get even, get back, get mad, get upset, lose it all. No, that's only going to hurt us. So what do we have to do? We have to respond to anger biblically. And I like this. It's James 1, verse 19 and 20. James 1, verse 19 and 20. And I have it marked back here in Pastor Kim's Bible. James 1, 19 and 20. The guys will have it on the screen there for us. And this is so good. I like this. He says, understand this, my beloved. This is the amplified version. Understand this, my beloved brethren and sisters, that everyone be quick to hear, be careful, and be a thoughtful listener. That's huge. That's, that's responding to anger biblically. Because if you're dealing with people at work or at home or next door at school who have an anger problem, they want to be listened to. They want to be listened to. Two. Listening to them relieves their frustration. And remember, at the very beginning of our teaching this weekend, I'm so glad. Thank you for all of our, our watch parties. Thank you for our host online. Aren't they awesome? Thank you for everyone out in the drive-in church. And thank you for those uh, right here in the sanctuary, in the auditorium, in the Rock Express, outside in the blow-ups. Wow. Thank you so much all for being here today. But I think I'm helping you because we're all dealing with anger and what do we do with this anger? How do we help other people? Remember, anger starts with fear, moves to frustration. People who are fearful and just frustrated get angry. Frustrated at the traffic. Frustrated waiting in line. Frustrated at the license bureau, waiting in line. Frustrated, you know, waiting in line to get into a restaurant. And we're all dealing with this. But it starts with fear, goes to frustration, goes to anger. And if we don't know how to, what to do with our anger, it goes to depression. It's so huge. So uh, look what it says. It says here in James 1, 19 and 20, uh, how to respond. We respond biblically. Let everybody be quick to hear, be a careful and thoughtful listener, and slow to speak. Oh my goodness. Slow to speak. We need to think before we speak, right? Uh, it says be a speaker of carefully. This is the Amplified now. James 1, 19, 20. You guys will have it on the screen. Be a speaker of carefully chosen words. So choose our words. Choose our words. So you know what? I need to think ahead tomorrow when someone's going to tick me off. And there'll be somebody to do that because we're in a broken world. Tomorrow when I have an opportunity to get offended, get angry, I need to prepare now how I'm going to respond. I need to prepare ahead of time so I just don't get, you know, side hit by the side and not know, oh, and respond you know, like my flesh would like to, I need to prepare myself. How do you do that, Pastor? Just what we're doing right now. Well, we're, we're going to talk about, that's the next thing, renew your mind in the Word of God. Because here the Word of God says, be, be a person who carefully chooses your words, you're slow to anger, and you have reflective forgiving. Oh my goodness. You know, that's going to be probably next weekend when we're back with you, is uh, how do I forgive those who've hurt me? How do I forgive those who've hurt me? We've all been hurt through COVID. We've all been let down. Now, I realize that God's doing great things. and I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to be where we all live because we all deal with this emotion of anger right now. What do I do with this anger? So I go back over here to my, uh, my notes. 
All right, so number one in review, as the guys come out, take responsibility, admit my anger. Number two, recognize the source of my anger. Number three, release my anger to God. Number four, respond to anger biblically. And number five, renew my thinking. Change my behavior. It's Romans 12, guys will have it on the screen, Romans 12, verse two, notice that by renewing our mind, we change our behavior. Romans 12, verse two. What's that, Pastor? Well, uh, whatever I'm thinking, I'm behaving. So if I'm behaving incorrectly, I'm thinking incorrectly. So if I want to deal with my anger, I have to deal with my thought life. If I want to deal, and we talk about this in Celebrate Recovery every Thursday night. And we have small groups that can help, you know, help you if you're dealing with anger right now. Or you know of someone, please share this teaching. Please share this, this, this message that we're sharing with you today. I think it will be helpful. So we, we need to change our thinking because through changing our thinking, we change our behavior. Remember, if I lose my temper, I lose my promotion, I could lose my job, I could lose my family, I could lose respect, I could lose my reputation, I could lose favor. Oh my goodness. You know, we all have seen times where we've all, I myself, we've all lost it and we thought, oh my goodness, that was the worst place, that was the wrong place because we lost favor in losing our temper and just letting it all hang out, you know? And we don't want to do that. So uh, I got to renew my mind, change my behavior. And then number six, I got to receive and grow in God's love daily. Oh, I love this. I got to receive and grow in God's love daily. It's on the screen. 1 Corinthians 13, 5. I love this. 1 Corinthians 13, 5 in the Amplified. And it talks about there, look on the screen, how we're not easily offended or overly sensitive. Oh my goodness. You know, you and I, we want to be aware so we can uh, care for people, right? Right now, we're looking for people who, who may be angry. You might be working with them. You might be, again, like I said, living with them. They're next door. You might have experienced them at the gas station, at, at, you know, at Target, at the checkout. They were rude. They pushed you around. They said, get that mask on quick. I mean, you know, all kinds of things we're dealing with right now. But it's so important then that we walk in God's love. You and I as Christians, we should be different and distinct and set apart in a world that's hurting. We have the answer. We have the love of God on the inside of us. 1 Corinthians 13. And it says there in verse 5, don't be overly sensitive and easily offended. God's love is not overly sensitive. We're to be sensitive, but there's a place where it goes too far. We hear a chip on our shoulder. You've heard that term before, a chip on our shoulder. We've got to get back in. Just dare you to knock that off. I just, I just want to have a fight today. There are some people who want to do that. You and I want to be peacemakers. We want to bring calm. That, that, that is a winning witness right now. A winning witness right now. And helping people deal with, what do I do with this anger? And number seven, this is it. This is the last one. Remember, and notice they all started with R now. Y'all appreciate that, right? Remember the negative results of anger, all kinds of trouble. You know, the one verse at the very beginning that we read, it says, when you lose your temper, the one translation says, it releases all kinds of trouble. So the next time I want to get even, get back, I want to express my anger. I just want to, I just want to, you know, whatever, blow my top. I need to stop and think, you know, what could this do to me, to my family, to my career, to my church, to my witness? What could this do? And just remind yourself that if I don't know how to, control this anger. And remember, you give it to God. He helps us. If I don't know how to control this anger, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to live with regret and I'm going to live with resentment. And I'm going to live not receiving and walking in God's very best for my family. So right now, I just want you to stand with me if you would, please. And as you're standing, again, as you close our Bibles and get ready to pray, I just want you to know that if you're dealing with anger today, or you know of someone that's dealing with anger today, God can help us. God can, God can change it for the better. God can use it. God can, you know, somebody said, oh, I can't change, you know, I, I, I'm gonna be this way. No, 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 we can change if we want to change. God will help us. So could you, could you bow your eyes and, bow your eyes, bow your heads and close your eyes. It's early, we're doing this this morning. But bow your heads and close your eyes. 
And let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray for everybody here, God, on campus, in the drive-in church, and Rock Express, outside in the blow-ups, everybody online. God, I pray for everybody, those that are listening to this service even after we've had church and the replay online, those who are dealing with anger, those who want to be set free, those who want to be delivered. God, I pray for them right now. God, you know where they're hurting. It all starts with a hurt. It all starts with a hurt that leads to a fear, that leads to frustration, that leads to anger, that ends with depression. God, I pray for them right now. Touch them where they're at. I, I speak to their spirit. I speak to their mind. I speak to, to them right now, to their heart. God, touch them. Let them know how much you love them, you care about them, and you can and will help them if they'll just surrender that anger to you. If they'll just give it to you and ask you for help right now, God. I pray for restoration of relationships. I pray for restoration of health, restoration of peace where there's been panic and worry and fear, depression. God, I just speak life and health and blessing in, into their life right now in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I want to lead everybody in this prayer. For those of you who don't know the Lord, don't have a relationship with God, you want one today, I want to pray for you. For those of you who are away from the Lord, you say, I want to come back to God. Pastor, uh, there's a move of God coming. I don't want to miss it. There's an outpouring of his spirit coming. I don't want to miss it. I want to be in the right spot. I want to be in my place. I want to run my race. I want to be right with God. If that's you, pray this prayer with me right now. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Church, pray this with me right now. Everybody everywhere, Heavenly Father, I repent. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for me. He rose again. Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Take my life and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all can look up now. Let's celebrate with heaven, amen? If you pray that prayer, text next, and it'll tell you the next step to take. Also, our host is coming now. I just want you to take some time and, and enjoy the, 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 the dessert truck today and enjoy fellowship and being with one another. Pray for us going back over the first weekend of October to the other campus and opening the children uh, and the nursery. We're excited to be with you today. I, I hope it's okay. I just wanted to be with you while we were on vacation. We'll be back next weekend, okay? Pray for us. Until then, don't forget, God is always for you. Thanks for checking out this week's message. Our purpose here at Church on the Rock is to help you know God better. And one way of doing that is through Growth Track. Another way is our small groups because we know around here, life is better together. You can find out more information about both of those and our online community at cotr.org online. Or you can email us at online at cotr.org. Can't wait to hear from you. And until next time, God is for you.